Hi, I'm Angel Chavez, Director of Shop Training and Compliance. Commercial Vehicle Safety Alliance, or CVSA, will be conducting their next safety campaign during the weeks of September 15th through the 21st. During this safety campaign, Operation Airbrake, they will be conducting a Level 4 inspection. A Level 4 inspection is when they are focusing on a specific area to study or review or deny or understand the trends in the industry. The DOT officers or CVSA inspectors will be focusing on these areas for a level four inspection. Low air warning devices, push rod travel, brake linings and drums, air loss rate, tractor protection systems, and the air brake anti-lock brake systems. In order to prepare for Operation Air Brake, we are asking our driver associates to pay a little extra attention to these areas when you are performing your routine pre-trip inspection. Now in the shop, we will be conducting our standard federal DOT inspection during this campaign as always. Now during this routine we'll be inspecting the usual things that we check such as air systems, air buildup, uh, brake stroke check, anti-lock brakes, everything that we can do to make sure that your unit is safe and will be able to pass these inspections or any other inspection. Okay, for low air warning devices, if the unit already has air, the driver will be asked to pump down the system to make sure that the audible or visible alarm uh, will come on for low air warning. The low air warning devices will come on at either 55 PSI or half of governor cutout. Now half of governor cutout is in the range of about 65 to 70 PSI nowadays with the, the cutout pressure being in the neighborhood of about 130 to 135 PSI. All right, so in order to do that, you're just gonna simply make sure that the air system is already built up and then pump the system down till you have either the audible or the visual warning that you have low air. So one of the things they'll be checking for is the air system buildup. Now the rule is, is that it should build up from 85 to 100 PSI in about 40 seconds or less. And generally the ballpark is right around 15 seconds for the normal air buildup time. So the way you do that is make sure that when the system is pumped down, Look on your gauge for right around 85 PSI and build it up with full throttle and build it up to 100 PSI. I'm going to start counting. It's right about there, I would call it about 85 PSI. And there's your 100 PSI. So that was about 17 seconds. For air loss rate, what they'll be checking for is make sure that it'll hold both on static pressure and applied pressure. Now for static pressure, uh, you'll just simply park the unit and with the both valves pulled, what they'll be looking for is air loss no more than 3 PSI in one minute. For the applied air test, you want to release both valves and apply the service brake. Now once the needles have settled on the gauge, what they'll be looking for is an air loss rate of no more than 4 PSI in one minute. When checking the tractor protection systems, what they'll be looking for is to make sure that the system will, in the event of a breakaway, that the tractor will protect itself and stay aired up in case anything happens to the trailer. During your pre-trip, you just want to make sure you push both valves in. And of course, you want to make sure your wheels are chalked when you're doing your pre-trip. And you simply want to push the, uh, the valve and release all the air in the system to make sure that these valves pop out. Now that should pop out at no less than 20 PSI. So for brake linings and drums, this is what you want to look for. You want to look for any shoes that are less than a quarter inch, cracked linings, drums that are discolored or cracked that are indications of overheating, oil saturation where the uh, oil is, is getting onto the actual shoes. For hoses and linings, this is what you want to check. Okay, you want to look for any hoses or linings that are hanging down to the ground, any evidences of rubbing or chafing, 
and any missing tie straps. Now keep in mind that the DOT officers will be under here with a creeper looking at these things very closely. So you want to get in here with a flashlight and look at these things very closely and look for any evidence of issues. So for the ABS light, what they'll be checking for is to make sure that it comes on for a few seconds and then it goes off. All right, for the trailer ABS, they're looking for the same thing. They simply key it on, make sure that it comes on for a few seconds and it should turn off, indicating that there are no faults in the system. For push rod travel adjustment, there's not actually anything you as a driver can do for that during your pre-trip. It is actually something that we do in the shop to measure the applied stroke. It's the same thing that the DOT officer is going to do to make sure that your brakes are in adjustment. Now the reason they check this is because if you don't realize this, the air brake chamber is actually split in two different systems. So you have your parking brake side, which is this back half, and your service brake, which is this side. This uh, particular brake chamber is collapsed, the spring is collapsed for demonstration purposes. But when the parking brake is set, this spring here is completely expanded and it pushes this push rod all the way out, which sets your parking brakes. Now when you, when you apply air to the uh, yellow valve, it fills this chamber up and pushes the spring back, which pulls this push rod back. So this service side here works independently when you push the foot valve on the tractor. So the reason why they check that is to make sure that this is functioning whenever you are applying that service brake. So when you apply air or push the foot valve, it's actually going to push air into this section and push this rod out. Now, while you as a driver can actually check push rod travel, there are several things that you can look for that are indications that you might have issues with your push rod travel adjustment. As an example, if you have any missing clevises or pins on the slack adjuster, if you have a slack adjuster that is not sitting at 90 degrees when the parking brake is applied, or another indication is if you see this orange line here, if it is all the way out when the parking brake is set, that is a good indication that you might have an issue with your push rod travel adjustment. If you find any issues with your push rod travel adjustment or any of those indications that I gave you or any issues with any part of the uh, pre-trip inspection, make sure you get with your shop and let us know so that we can get these issues fixed for you.